In 1729, Baltimore Town was founded. It was a small town. It was made up of 61-acre lots and surrounded by a stockade fence with only three gates. Within uh, about 19 years, in 1748, John Leonard Barnett and his son, Elias, were immigrants from Falkenstein, Germany. They came to Baltimore by way of York, Pennsylvania. They established Baltimore's very first industry, a brewery. It was a brave undertaking at the time, primarily because at this point in history, most brewing was actually done within the home instead of in separate breweries. In addition to that, the few breweries that had been started in the state of Maryland had failed miserably. Very brave indeed. So despite all of this, the Barnett's family set up a brewery and was incredibly successful, the first successful brewery in Maryland. After his father's death in 1749, Elias Barnett carried on the family tradition. By 1755, he had also helped to establish one of Baltimore's earliest churches, Zion Lutheran Church. It's still standing today and became home for over 200 years to many of Baltimore's prolific brewers. The brewery continued to flourish under the Barnett's family until it changed hands in 1795. Other brewers would operate from this site for another 200 years. And this was only the beginning of brewing in Baltimore. Over the course of the next two centuries, many breweries would rise and fall in Baltimore. In 1783, Thomas Peters established Baltimore's fifth brewery. Peters was a Revolutionary War veteran that relocated from Philadelphia to Baltimore after the war. He sold a variety of beers. He sold ale. He sold strong beer. Strong beer is beer that's really high in alcohol. He sold table beer, which is medium alcohol and very good quality. And he sold small beer, which is low alcohol. And of course, last but not least, ship's beer, which was Poor quality, poor alcohol, poor all the way around, but fit for sailors, apparently. <laughs> By 1792, Peters was said to have the largest brewery in America, this according to the Maryland Journal. He continued to expand operations and even built housing for his uh, brewery employees to live. Sadly, by 1812, a fire had destroyed the brewery. It was an $80,000 loss, a very large loss for that time in history. Within a year, he had sold the brewery to George Brown for $65,000, recouping at least some of the loss. George Brown opened the brewery within a few months after renovations, and this is when history gets interesting. At this time, we happen to be fighting the War of 1812. And Mary Pickersgill, who lived right around the corner from uh, George, Brown brewery, George Brown's brewery, happened to be commissioned to sew the flag that would fly over Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. Unfortunately, the flag was so large, 40 feet, she couldn't sew it in her house. But George Brown happened to be around the corner and was in the process of renovating the brewery, therefore, she asked if she could sew the flag on the floor of his brewery where there would be enough room to kind of spread out and put the, flag, uh, the stars in place on the flag. He granted her permission and the Star Spangled Banner flag was born. Shortly thereafter, it was flying over Fort McHenry, and I think we all know what happened after that, the bombardment and the defense of Fort McHenry, and of course, we wouldn't be here if we hadn't won the war. <laughs> so there's our place in history. Unfortunately, George Brown couldn't maintain the brewery too many years later, and he ended up selling it to Eli Claggett in 1819. Eli Claggett was also a veteran of the War of 1812, and he took a great interest in the brewery, and in fact, within a decade, he installed Baltimore's first steam engine in his brewery. It was a little six horsepower engine, and he used it to grind the malt. Now, other inventions um, were, were going to come along, but this was quite a big step for Claggett and the brewery. And he continued operating, uh, actually increased capacity within a year to 10,000 barrels of beer per year which is just an incredible amount of beer that he was producing at that time, in part thanks to the use of the steam engine. By 1856, he began operating as the Baltimore Brewing Company, adding in partners, still producing Claggett's Brown Ale, some Porter, uh, and some Brown Stout. But unfortunately, four years later, the brewery was claimed by fire. 